what up what up what up everybody welcome for the first time or back to another dlj works video if you cannot tell by my excitement i am really excited to make this video i actually postponed going for a nice little walk with the family because i really wanted to get this video out i felt like this was some pertinent information sharing it with you guys because I, I know in these times right now that we're in, people need ideas and people need some visible, tangible results in order to see those ideas come into fruition. So as you saw in the title of this video, how do I make money? So this video, first off, is going to be kind of a two-sided thing. I'm going to show you how I've actually made money, some real results here online as a web designer developer and how you can actually do the same thing too by providing you some of those same ideas. All right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing I actually want to do, you see my little list checklist here, kind of keep me on track. But the first thing I actually want to show you that I've actually made some real legitimate sales. And I'm going to show you actually the sales that I've made uh, was using my skills in Photoshop, using the, the, to the equipment that I have here, this MacBook, this and I actually wasn't even using this Yeti microphone. I was actually using just some Apple earphones to get this accomplished. But using everything that you have already at your disposal technically in order to make an income for yourself. And that first thing I've actually made money with was Teachers Pay Teachers. Now, as a former English teacher, um, then getting into technology applications, teaching middle school students. Now I'm working for a science company fully invested into my web design development career i actually started making products here on teachers pay teachers if you don't know what this website is it's a marketplace for teachers where they actually can digi digitally make their products available to other teachers and what i've actually done was i've taken public domain stories and i would sit up here with this yeti microphone or like i said at the time my apple headphones and i would record i would re-edit the audio to all of these stories and i would even add some sound effects some free domain music stock music however you want to call it and i've created a whole library a little small library just for teachers to go ahead and purchase um whatever lessons that they want to okay and i don't really i don't really push this i'm still getting better at my marketing so anything i show you here if you're like oh your numbers or low you haven't made a lot of sales and everything else i probably could if i invested heavily into the market and i will admit my marketing ability is still growing it's a bit weak but that's an area that i need to focus on because i've created a many of products but um you probably would be surprised that they didn't get the push that they needed because i would create something and then just move on to the next thing and just continue to focus on creating but i've created a small library here to a very niche group of people and that's the key thing where you're selling something online you have to find that group of people that you want to sell to that you know need your they they need what you're offering and this idea for years i've had a teachers pay teachers account from 2015 and it wasn't until 2017 that i actually saw that there was a need for students who needed an audio component when they're reading and like i said this i've known this and i've gained this experience and understanding this problem and filling the void for that problem providing a solution by trying to provide an audio piece and when i actually did that for myself then i went on ahead and just kind of wrapped it up in a nice little bow and offered it to other people all right so i'm gonna show you an actual screenshot that i took of some sales figures and of course i got the names kind of read off protect the innocent here but you can see this is just 2020 sales alone right now all right you can see that i've made quite a few sales here selling in at a very reasonable price because i put a lot of work into it probably max about being about five dollars but then you can bundle it up so i would sell four pieces four stories at a time and bundle it up as a price package and then on a the total amount the whole entire library they can get it for about thirty dollars and i think that's a very good deal so this is one way and this is me using it and even though i'm speaking on this as a former teacher this is me bringing in my photoshop my adobe illustrator skills you can actually see that come into play with the covers here trying to brand it find a nice aesthetic look for all of my product packages where it'll just catch the eye and make it unique to the stories all right so i had a lot of fun making this and this is an example of taking your skills that you already have your online abilities and figuring out how you can actually service a market with those skills and that's what's happened here with teachers pay teachers now going more towards the web development side all right 
the second way I'm going to actually mention, well, it's still not web development, but the second way I'm actually going to mention is that software as a service. So, of course, you want to be signed up for some things like right now I try because I'm a YouTuber, a web design development YouTuber. I have TubeBuddy and I utilize TubeBuddy in order to be able to see my keyword research, be able to plan out better how to what people are looking for based on the keyword search volume. I'll show you that here in action. So let me go ahead and click on this. I think this is it right here. Yeah. So I'm going to go to Keyword Explorer. And you can use Keyword Explorer. Type in whatever you need. So I'm going to type in Web Design. Okay, did I spell that right? Let's just go with Web Design Careers. What's the search volume looking like? Okay, it gives you unweighted, which means it's going to measure it. Um, it's not against your channel. All right, this is just standalone, the results. And Web Design Careers... The search volume is pretty fair, but the competition is really good, though an optimization strength is heavily good. So that's excellent. Let's see what it is weighted against my personal channel. All right. So I'm still trying to understand the statistics down here, so I can't really explain it too well right now. I'm not going to even try to mislead you into it, but let's just look at the, the simplest thing to understand is the overall score. So weighted against my channel, how will my channel fare, I mean, stand against a, a chance against others out there? And it'll be probably a, a fair thing without weighting it against my channel is, is pretty good just the terms alone unweighted is very good but weighted is pretty against my channel how does my channel stand a chance it's, it's pretty fair for it so and that's really good for me to know i would still make a video based on that but i know to include web design careers in a certain way here on this channel all right so that's two buddy so I, I try to sell two buddy well i haven't really pushed it too much so you can actually see my numbers back here are just zero right now but as you can see, if you're into getting into YouTube as a web designer and developer, I definitely recommend that you get TubeBuddy to definitely help you out with this. All right. The next thing that I actually want to show you is my Just Host account. All right. Now, this is my lifetime sales. So as you can see, I haven't pushed Just Host that much at all. Over the course of the lifetime, I've gotten about 10 signups, uh, 52 net clicks, just people just clicking on it because I've linked it in my YouTube description. or I tried to sell the link in my video and you can see over the lifetime, it's been since 2014, I've had just hosts. I've either signed somebody up, a client, because any client that I do when I was doing freelance work, I would have them sign up under just host. And I would sign, sometimes I'll be working with people who didn't know how to actually get their own hosting account. So I had to walk them through it. I would make sure I would click the link for them, take their credit card over the phone. And bam, I had a sale. So I had an affiliate sale. And a couple of these are for people who registered online, I believe. But uh, I don't really have that data in front of me right now. And I would protect the innocent anyway, uh, regardless, and not show you that. But uh, as you can see, a very modest $645. I have no shame in it. If you need to see my videos on Just Host, uh, I have two videos actually made why Just Host. And I actually have another video where I show you the excellent customer service that they provide here on this channel. So that's something else to check out. But let me mention this in terms of software as a service with things such as when you have when you're doing affiliate programs through hosting websites such as Just Host or if you decide to go with HostGator, GoDaddy, I'm not going to force you to do Just Host just because I'm mentioning it. But I I've used them since 2014. They've been great to me. Um, things like TubeBuddy, when you're doing these software as a service, you want to get with affiliate programs that will have recurring either monthly or annual sales for you. That means that every time that a user renews their account with the company, you get a per, you get a commission to that. You get a percentage. And that's some of the things that that's one of the things you really want to keep in mind with. You know, if it's um another program, I don't know if TubeBuddy is, is really monthly or if they're annual. Every time somebody renews their annual membership, you'll get a percentage of that. Or if you are actually participating in a larger piece of the pie for every um, sign up that comes through through TubeBuddy, you get a percentage of that. So, um, so yeah, you want to get these things that have recurring renewal services. So that way you have a guaranteed way that you're going to get paid. And that's the beauty about software as a service. But most of them right now are pretty or very much annual. If you can find the monthly one, when it has services per month that people have to keep, you know, based on a subscription model, a monthly subscription model. That's a way that you can guarantee that you're going to get paid. Uh, one another one that I don't have up right now is um, I don't have up the Aweber, which is an email marketing service. But I also have an affiliate program with them, too. I don't really push Aweber too much. Cause I haven't put a lot of emphasis on email marketing and email marketing is still something that I'm, I'm really filling out for myself right now. 
Uh, so maybe in future videos, you may see me actually say sign up to my list once I actually decide what you're going to sign up for. So I'm just being very honest about that. So I don't I don't really want to push a Weber because I haven't, you know, I haven't actually dug into the email system. So I can't really talk about something I haven't really had a, 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 a grand experience with. But I've been with a Weber for some years at this moment and I've actually used them for other people. So I allow other people to go ahead and use Aweber for those who actually know what they want to use an email marketing system with. And for that matter, they're pretty good. I, I must say for what I've seen with other people, they're really good. But for myself, I just haven't had any reason to actually have people sign up for an email list right now. But we'll see how that actually plays out in the future. All right. The next one that I actually want to show you is a website that I've been working on where I'm going to sell. Uh, print on demand merchandise and this is my controversy sales website which is going to be an apparel store that i'm still in the works on doing but it's actually the plug-in this is the back end of my wordpress site because i'm using woocommerce i'm not a shopify person wordpress till i die baby all right uh it probably wasn't funny i probably even need to add that in there but in any case <laughs> we can see the printful plug-in here the printful um what do we call this where you have these uh custom I forget the WordPress term for this. But anyway, we have the the printful um area here. All right, the API is connected to my website so I can when I go ahead and I create my designs, my t-shirts, my clothing here on this website, all right, I can actually have that immediately get uploaded through my own website without like too much hassle, without a lot of manual labor going into this. So this is also another way that you can actually try to make money online as well as a web designer and developer. If, if Especially if you're a web designer, you're more emphasizing the graphic side where you know you're a good graphic artist and you can sell some good t-shirts. This is what you want to do. This is something that you could definitely do. And, and here's what I want to say. Here's what I can't stand is YouTubers that sell in their, their merchandise, but they don't really think about they're just selling their brand merchandise, but they don't really think about their customers. Like, I'm not going to be selling DLJ Works shirts to people unless you just want it. If you tell me that you want it, I'm more than happy to, like, create you one because you want to be a support in that way. But for the most part, I want to create designs that I know people that will entertain people that will catch their eyes and they'll, they'll want to buy. So those are the things that I'll be more than willing to create. So this is another great idea that you can do. And if you're a web de developer... If you know WordPress and you want to connect and deal with WooCommerce and do a lot of customizations, it's the best of both worlds. So this is something that you can also offer too to other people who may be wanting to start an online retail space. You can offer those skills and try to figure out some things that you want to negotiate with them. So um, not only are you doing the site and you're helping them create products, but you are also um, doing some web design freelance service with them as well so that's another hybrid that you can actually figure out for that so those are the, pretty much the ways that I'm actually making and trying to make a living online uh, in addition to my full-time job so these are really supplemental ways right now they're not replacing my income under any circumstances maybe one day they will you know right now I'm using YouTube as an audience building platform um, see who I can help see who I can service but for the most part, these are the ways that and very real ways that you can see no, the numbers aren't just blown up. I'm sorry, I don't have certain high sales numbers where you're looking at my back end and I'm one of these Internet gurus with like thousands and thousands of dollars from clients. But really humble beginnings because I've known some people who to target and what they actually wanted and trying to just provide good customer service. That's that's the thing that I'm actually trying to do. Now, let's go to the list. This part right here is going to be more so for you. So if you're a web designer slash developer, you're a hybrid of both, you're either or, whatever the case may be, um, this is some things that I've actually was thinking about in terms of ways that you can actually do the same thing, even if you don't. Actually, I want to say automated income. But we'll, we'll use passive. We'll use passive because you're more familiar with that terminology probably more than anything. But the, the first column that we have here, the, the passive income area. So WordPress themes. All right. If you're a web designer, um, even if you're a web developer, you know PHP. And maybe you can partner with the designer. You set up the PHP and they actually add the CSS, the styles, the visual design, the measurements, all those sorts of things. You, you can partner and you can create together as a force create WordPress themes and sell them on a WordPress 
marketplace all right if i go back here into appearance and we go into uh let me see here themes of course we go into themes all right you got a whole bunch of themes well these are the themes right now i'm not going to really change the theme that i got come really happy with it but these are the things that you can actually do sell it here on the marketplace uh i think i know it's other marketplaces that you could sell like mojo marketplace or whatnot which i don't have access to right now but there are paid marketplaces that you can actually go to and sell those things as a simple google search uh let's just do mojo marketplace wordpress themes wordpress themes okay wait till this loads up this is one example of a marketplace that you can actually go ahead and begin to sell uh, all sorts of WordPress themes, okay? All sorts of types. So you sell yours, and if you can make it to where it's it's very easy to configure for customers that are looking to have a WordPress website, it's intuitive, it's up to standards, it's responsive, all these things. Responsive meaning that if they're on a mobile, I mean, if they're on a, their iPhone and they're looking at your website, it looks like an app almost okay it, it, the the website is very much so fluid the design is fluid with whatever device they have it's adaptive if you follow all those things you, you'll be into the money with this so this is one way that you can actually you know make money is by creating wordpress themes it's the same thing while i'm on with the subject of wordpress also with wordpress plugins okay and if you don't know what a word wordpress plugin is if i go to plugins here Let's just go to add new. There's all, I mean, there's all sorts of plugins that you can actually use. So let's go ahead and let's type in, uh, I don't know, um, JavaScript at whatever. Let's see what happens. Okay. You get all sorts of results coming back to you for plugins and if you're more on the development side this may be more your speed because this is a form of selling your code um in a form of a function or a feature so if you look at this let's do light speed cache let's see what this is i don't want to install it because a lot of these plugins they offer a light version that's that's funny i'm at light speed cache and uh, i'm talking about light versions but a lot of these plugins they offer a uh, a paid model they give you a light version and then you have to actually get a paid subscription in order to actually use their full features of the premium part of the actual plugin and maybe i can actually just show you through a plugin that i already have that's already installed where that's the case and i'm only just using a light version for this okay so let me see here i got a lot of updates i gotta do for this which is no problem at all any case i don't really have anything on my back end but um that you can actually use let me see this here if they're actually let me see well i wanted to really show you just uh the actual plugin that's used oh wait a second coming soon do i have a coming soon yeah here it is coming soon actually let me see here coming soon okay All right, so I know it coming soon. This plugin in particular, you have to actually pay for a. Let's just click on it. You have to actually pay to get a. This is the demo. See, unlock more features in coming soon pro version. There we go. You have to actually pay in order to get the pro version. Now I'm just using the standard. The standard features are show are serving me effectively right now. I have no need to get the pro version at this moment, but this is something that you can actually do if you're creating a plugin. You offer a piece of the software, and then if they want other features unlocked that they figure out that they actually need later on, that they've grown out of the basic version, then you can go ahead and, and pay a additional premium in order to get the full version unlocked, and maybe on a subscription basis, based on updates and some other things. I don't know, however you want to work that. I actually was listening to Masters of Doom, and when the guys at it software was making doom and the some of their earlier games that was making that that's the idea came to actually make a piece of the game or make a full version of the game but offer a piece of it to the players and if they wanted to get 
the full version or another level, they would have to send checks, <laughs> physical checks to the actual developers. And so I, I rec actually recommend that book. If, even if you are a web designer, developer, even though it's more so into game development, that's something that you need to consider. So I hope that showing you this part really helps you out on that. The next thing I actually want to talk about is, and then those plugins are the same way for Wix and Weebly. So you can create plugins and additional feature pieces of software that will enhance somebody else's website based on a functionality that they actually need. All right. Um, CSS web templates for um, for sites. If you're uh, more of a, on the visual side and you have more of the web design affinity and you if you learn CSS, that's also another way of providing your code for sale to other people, because now the CSS is going to change the look and feel of the website just by using just code and attaching that code to either the PHP or the HTML and making the changes that's actually necessary. So, so yeah, that's something else to think about. Now, uh, this right here, I'm going to actually probably do another video on. I can go into depth on this. This is going to be a video by itself, but I'm going to go into this briefly because we're already 21 minutes into this video. HTML5 games online. And if you actually combine that with a monthly membership site, you could be in a position such as, let me see, you can actually create a marketplace. You can create a marketplace and you don't even probably don't even have to be a developer or even know HTML, um, be pr actually be the one creating the HTML5 games. You could be the one hosting it, creating a membership website, and these games, if they're really good, be accessed through a paywall. So for somebody that's still a PC freak, they're on their laptops all the time and they need to play some games online, you can actually go ahead and create these games and make them behind a paywall. That's another idea that you can uh, actually do is create your own marketplace. And this is Market.js. So, and you have other games that you can license out. They're willing to sell and license out for you to actually use. So, if, for example, if you're going to pay $999 for Axe Master to be hosted on your website, well, that means that you can offer that game behind that paywall too. And other people could play it and you could still make revenue. So that's look that should be looked at as as an investment. Or you can actually be the development house, the online development house where you're developing the games yourself and you're offering these games to be played on different sorts of social media platforms. And Facebook was notorious for this with Farmville and, and some other things. This is soft games. And you can actually if you go to click to play, it's gonna take you to Facebook. So that means that the game is playable on Facebook and that's where you could play it as. But I, I really I'm gonna have to go in really in depth on HTML5 games because that still is in a league of it's like a, a hybrid of being when you're dealing with HTML5 games, you're a hybrid between game developer and still web developer because you're using web development code, web development languages, excuse me for a second, web development languages to um create these games. So that's something else to get excited about. JavaScript html5 canvas this is really something to get excited about if you're really into game development and you want to actually marry that world with the world of web design and development all right so with the gaming websites that i just showed you so in conjunction with membership websites as well maybe it, it, it doesn't have to be game based but i mean the the actual business model for having a html5 game based website will be membership based membership base so people will pay a recurring monthly fee to use and play the games on there just like they would on apple play apple arcade that's what i'm trying to say or any other sort of recurring monthly fee that you have to pay such as on stream what have you in order to actually play those games so that is another idea that you can take hold of now keep in mind the marketing getting people attracted figuring out ways on how you can actually market those games is completely different than the way that you're marketing anything else but games usually if the games look fun they have a good message they play into people's nostalgia you can usually have games sell themselves because i can be on facebook and people get annoyed by ads but if i see an ad for a game that's similar to castlevania in style then i'm going to more than likely want to buy that game and play it in order to get that feeling anything that's castlevania symphony of the night similar i'm probably more than likely going to want to play that game all right so that's something to also keep in mind niche specific online software this is things 
for hospitals, for real estate agents. Maybe you're creating a, and this has already been done, but maybe you're creating a calculator that calculates the price of a home that somebody is going to get. And maybe um, the real estate agent can actually, it'll automatically generate for that real estate agent what commission they're going to get off. I don't know. These are just some ideas, but you can also create some niche online software from that. And so I'm not going to go into too much detail about the niche software right now. And that may be another video at this moment, but that's something also that you can keep in mind as well. Now for the active parts of making money online as a web designer or a web developer, obviously the first one is going to be freelance design. That's going to be your traditional route. You're doing web design services. You're building websites. Maybe you're building an online application or something like that. I don't know, but you're providing that standard service for part of somebody that needs a website and they need information housed on it they need to need it to function a certain kind of way they don't know where to start they don't feel like outsourcing or not they don't feel like doing it themselves so they're going to outsource to somebody no matter how basic the need may actually be all right but what doesn't get talked about that a lot of people don't mention and they mention freelance design and freelance design is really iffy depending on your the climate depending on how well you can actually market yourself sell yourself find clients when it's a downturn but a lot of people don't really talk about website management Ooh, what is that so website management is something in part that I'm doing at my current job right now and a website that was already built and I've already showed you um, in the two videos ago and being a website manager so check that video out as well but websites that are already established and they just need somebody to manage those websites but a standard regular person can't just manage those websites somebody that is really knowledgeable with html and css to make little tweak little small design changes they need to be familiar with the technical lingo in order to manage the website properly so you if somebody already has a website that they've had built for them they don't feel like managing it but the website is doing well the website is bringing in a certain amount of money it has a uh, uh, audience that's already coming to a recurring traffic the the people are getting fed off the website meaning that there's certain information that they're participating in consuming and they need somebody to manage this stuff they need somebody to moderate and make sure that things are operating smoothly that's what you can actually do you can be a freelance website manager and manage these sites for people for a monthly fee and you can determine whatever fee that you want to determine with that you know most of the time though no, you'll find a job and you'll be the one probably managing the website depending on what the company is but you can be a freelance website manager and say hey you got a website you had somebody build it for you this is going to come with your communication skills those soft skills that john simas has been selling y'all on for years if you don't know who that is check them out on youtube but this is what what's going to come in handy with that all right repair service you're using your coding skills your web development skills to either fix something that's broken in a website or even add a feature not necessarily a repair but maybe you need a feature needs to be added something needs to be updated maybe the php is outdated and needs to be configured properly that's a repair service it's a freelance repair service that you can provide and that probably goes in the same way with technical support if using your expertise your knowledge knowledge that ty lopez knowledge in order to help somebody else and pay a, you get paid a nice premium for it so that's something else that you need to figure out but lastly I'm going to leave this close to 30 minute video now on and that is at the end of the day you want to figure out how do you make these things subscription based with the technical support the web repair service the website management actually all that can go under the umbrella of freelance design and development and you could charge a monthly premium for them to keep these services up all right you want to figure out how to make this monthly recurring because if you're sitting out there and you're just freelance, you're like, oh, I got a client, I got a one time payment, and then you got to try to worry about where your next check is coming from, you're going to be screwed out. You're going to be screwed out. So these are some ideas that you can actually incorporate, that you can implement in terms of trying to do something different as a web designer and developer and make sure that you're being paid. You, you know where your next check is coming from. You know where you're getting paid from. Making sure you're keeping that food on the table. And you're, you're not worried about or having that concern being weighed on your heart so heavily. So figure out how to make these things subscription-based, a recurring monthly payment, and I think you'll be good. 
anyway thank you for rocking with me <laughs> for so long on this video but i really do hope i provided a lot of information for you in terms of some good ideas on how to make money as a web designer online web developer online and yeah if there's something that i didn't clarify you did not understand please leave a comment below and i love to answer those questions and chat with you dlj works deshaun johnson god bless y'all see you in the next video